All right, guys, I just got this in today, the Atari Pong pub table. I'm going to give you my first impressions and full breakdown here after this. All right, guys, here it is. First look at the fully put together Pong pub table. This thing is really sleek. It's well put together. Nice, strong construction. Uh, for those who don't know already, these are the strong sides. Your black sides are the thick wood, and then your thinner panels are the white. Everything came uh, pretty well put together. Definitely a, a good packaging. Nothing got destroyed in shipping. Really easy to put together. This thing was probably about a 20 to 25 minute assembly. Honestly, it would have been closer to 15 minutes had it not just been for that trim that goes underneath the screen here. It's a little piece of rubber that you have to push down with your fingernail all the way around to kind of get that water sealant on there. Overall, I know a lot of people were talking about the top of this thing not having plexi, but I think I'm not bothered by it, and I'll tell you why. If you had the plexiglass on here, you would have to have cutouts for both your spinners and your buttons all the way across. And, you know, a lot of people say they want to set their drinks on it or whatever. I'm way too clean for that. Uh, that's not what I would use this for. I'm not going to set my drink on top of this no matter what, okay? That's, that's just not the route that I'm going to go. Um, and if I did, I would definitely have a coaster. I'm just a clean person, I guess. I don't know. A lot of people don't necessarily do that. This isn't for neighborhood kids. This isn't an arcade I'm charging admission to. This is my house, okay? So you've seen my game room tour, hopefully. You kind of have an idea that I keep things pretty well organized. So with that being said, I'm just not worried about setting beverages on it. But I can tell you this. If you were to spill a beverage on it and it had a plexiglass cover, that beverage is still going to go in each of the holes, which is just going to get around your buttons and your spinner anyway. Um, which is going to create the same mess, not really protecting much there. And then on top of that, uh, if you've ever had plexiglass, at my full-time job, I have a plexiglass cover over the desk that I work at. And those things get scratched like crazy. Like, they do not look good. So, um, nonetheless, I'm okay with the protective coating that they put on here. Your quality of woodwork is going to be pretty consistent with what you expect from Arcade 1-Up, okay? Um, not anything to write home about. It's not amazing, but it is good. And they have improved, that's for sure. Pretty much every aspect of this has improved. The spinners are great. The buttons are really pretty consistent with what we've seen in the past. But here's my biggest gripe, and I haven't heard anyone mention this yet, but this ugly ASS sticker right here. I mean... We know they put these things on the back of the standard cabinets, but you can't peel this off without leaving behind like insane white residue. You'd have to get out the goo gone. And this is the thinner white panel right here. So you would just stain the crap out of that and scratch the mess out of it if you tried to remove that. So you're basically stuck with this on here. This has definitely got to be the back end of your uh, pub table wherever you position it. But, you know, first impressions, really well done. Great sound, good audio, excellent hardware, nice, solid, heavy build. This was good construction. Bravo, Arcade 1-Up. Okay, guys, let's get into some gameplay here. I'm not going to go through every single game on here, but, um, you know, just to kind of give you a brief overview, I've already played them all, and the first thing that I noticed is just the big difference in terms of the hardware. I mean, Arcade 1-Up really stepped up the hardware, especially with the spinners. These are so smooth they really spin well they feel comfortable they're nice and heavy unlike the original gen 1 stuff um you know bravo to those guys for making that happen of course that's a good look at pong if you hold the player one start button down for five seconds it brings you back to the main menu one nice thing is if you press that right button there you have a unique settings menu for every single game so you see i'm adjusting the settings for circus atari things like sensitivity scans on scan lines excuse me uh, can be adjusted there we'll go ahead and go into the next game super breakout this of course is a ton of fun um, been many adaptations to this game many similar type games that have been released over the years uh, it's just a classic format for gaming it really never gets old you can pretty much play it over and over and over again it's always a unique challenge uh, and you can see hey i'm actually doing quite well today oh spoke too soon <laughs> but nonetheless i will move on to the next game which is going to be Warlords. Now, Warlords, of course, is a fan favorite. Probably the best overall four-player game in here. I could really see this going over well at a party. Um, just, you know, a, a lot of fun to play this game. Uh, very little learning curve. Your goal is basically to protect your castle on each corner. Uh, you can see that there's flames coming at it. They chip away at the defenses there. And ultimately, if they break through, 
um, then you lose. So your goal is to just protect your castle as long as you can uh, in hopes that the other castles get destroyed before it. And the longest person to last is the winner. Uh, of course, this gets very challenging as the flame kind of speeds up and slows down um, at will. And then beyond that, they add in additional flames as well. So you can see now there's two flames. But, uh, you know, I'm not actually great at this game. This was a good run for me. Um, <laughs> surprisingly, I, I normally do pretty bad. In fact, I was playing with my 14-year-old daughter earlier, and she pretty much killed me. It, it was uh, it was pretty embarrassing. But nonetheless, uh, you know, just the menu for game selection, by the way, I think is very clean. I love having all four titles on there. You don't have to spend a lot of time, you know, uh, changing pages or anything like that. It's all just kind of right there and adjust really quick. Um, you know, this here is a good look at Pong Sports, which is interesting because, of course, there's the eight titles that are included here, but Pong Sports in and of itself sort of has its own titles across the top. Um, you can see there's an additional nine titles here, but Quadra Pong is already included, so we'll just say eight more titles. So really what you're looking at is like 16 titles here. Um, on Pong Sports now, they're really just variations of Pong, right? You have uh, soccer, where it's basically a goal. Uh, you have hockey, where it's essentially a goal. Um, and then others, such as uh, foosball pong, where basically you're just, I think it's called foos pong, where you're basically just moving multiple um, paddles at once instead of just the one. You got pong doubles, or you're moving the two. Um, as you can see here, uh, there's actually four across the board, and they they move uh, all at the same time. So for the most part, it's just differing variations on Pong, but uh, new titles nonetheless, and certainly a lot of fun uh, to play each one of them. They all present their own challenges. Uh, some I'm all right at and some I'm not so great. So just giving you a little uh, look at this, and you can see this is one I am not good at. <laughs> it's pretty interesting that I'm playing nobody, but I'm actually losing three to one. Does anybody notice that? I <laughs> Moving on, guys, you know, some kind of final impressions here. Overall, just a fantastic build. I think this is a must own uh, if you have a game room. The price point at 550 is probably a little high. I don't complain a whole lot about the price because I'm a businessman. I understand how these things work. But the reality is I think it would work better at probably around $500. But it's a great height, perfect bar height, very comfortable to stand at. Um, I do believe it's very solid construction and it's a very heavy table. Um, it's something that's made to last. So that's exciting. That's good news to hear. Great game selection. Um, if you're a fan of Pong, this, again, is a must own. You pretty much have every variation of Pong available. Tempest is fun. Warlord, Super Breakout. Uh, you know, you get some additional titles there. And they've upgraded the hardware and made this thing worth it. As always, guys, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. We'll see you next time.